Hello, it's Sharif here with Engadget, and you are looking at a brand new GeForce GTX 680 from NVIDIA, and this is pretty much the card we've been waiting for for a long time from NVIDIA, and to explain why we've been waiting for it and whether it's delivered, I have um, Tom from NVIDIA. Hi there. Uh, Tom, so one of the biggest new features here is GPU boost, and that's one thing that people are going to be interested in, and I guess it needs a bit of explaining. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what it is, and can you, can you load, up, load up a game for us so we sure. can understand it better? Absolutely. Um, so on this monitor, we're running the brand new GTX 680, and I'm going to show you a new tool from EVGA called Precision X, and what it does is it monitors the performance of the GPU in real time. It shows you the clock that we're running at and the voltage that we're running at. Right. Now, the first thing to note is that at stock, you know, at the desktop, we're running 324 megahertz. And let me just uh, pull up Battlefield 3, and we'll see what happens. So it's going to take a few minutes to launch. Sure. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. ready. So now we've, uh, we've launched Battlefield 3, and what I'm going to do is just come right into the campaign, and I'm going to resume it right at the scene where we're kind of fighting in the uh, parking lot. And we'll just uh, show you what's happening on the monitor. Okay, so we're out here. We're going to do a little shooting. We're running around. Okay, I'm going to run over here and just kind of do some fire. What we're doing is just showing you typical gameplay. Sure. Excuse any language yeah, you may hear. Yeah, pardon me about uh, waiting for some bad guys. Look, it is. Oops. Take back two of them. Okay, doing some fine shooting here. I'm not like super great Battlefield 3 player. But enjoy there we it. go. All looks very detailed, very good, right. very neat. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pause that, and let's go ahead and look over at the monitor again. So it, right now it's reporting a clock of 1110. Let me pull up the monitor so you can take a look at it in more detail. Oops. So, so you can see the um, the clock that the GPU is running now is at uh, the high frequency clock. But look at this; it's lowering. The reason it's lowering is because there's no demand being put on it right now. It's right. going to keep on lowering, and we're also now reporting the power in real time. But the key thing is the clock is boosting automatically above its spec. The spec is 1005, and what GPU boost does is it automatically raises the clock when it can. All right, so this is similar to what we've seen with CPUs, which have turbo boost features, exactly where similar. under load, they will, they will increase their clock speed. Very similar. Very um, similar. So it's the same principle, but now applied for the first time to GPUs. GPUs. Absolutely. Okay. And um, not only that, the overclocking tool that we've built with EVJ is also very easy to use, and you can do it in real time. So I'm going to... I'm going to raise the default clock uh, by about 120 megahertz and then apply it. And if we come back over to the game, we can now see in real time the effect. So I'm returning to the game and I'm still running. And now look on the right hand side mm -hmm. of the screen. You can see the clock is now running fixed at 1233. That's all being monitored in real time. We're looking at the power consumption, we're looking at the temperature. We're Factoring all of these things into the calculation of the perfect clock. Let's let's just um, pause that a second, and let's just um, pin this down. So, okay. initially, what happened when you paused the game? Mm -hmm. You hadn't made any changes to the, the stock right. clock um, characteristics, but automatically the system reduced its clock speed because it, it wasn't under load anymore. You'd pause right. the game. So no menus with crazy clock speeds right. anymore. That's and, right. and Things are going to dial down automatically. It dials down, and that's for, for power conservation. Yep, absolutely. It's okay. a better experience. Now, then you started the game, and of course it, 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 the, the, the CPU returns to the level it needs. But then you showed us something different, which is you actually changing the power curve itself. So right. it's overclocking, that bit. It is overclocking. When I raise this slider, what I'm basically saying is, I'd like the clock to be offset by 123 megahertz of where it would have otherwise been. So yep. GPU boost is actually moving up and down a curve. That's what this little wiggly thing is. It's changing the operating point in real time based on what the game's doing. Um, another way to think about this is, if I lower the amount of power that's available to the GPU boost algorithm, I'm going to lower it down to say 84%, and I'm going to apply it. And let me unpause this thing. And let's run it some more and see mm -hmm. what happens. Now, what I've done is I've lowered the power in the game. You've put a power cap of your own choosing on there. That's right. And now look at the clock. It's now down at 1050. So even, even though I've asked for a faster clock, the game itself is running uh, at 1050. We see it. So, so the, the, um, the clock there is at the top line, if you hadn't figured that out. And now it's lower because we'd given it a power cap. Exactly. And so this is about... Um, 
giving much more flexibility to gamers and making it much easier to overclock. But it also does something else which is kind of crazy. It means that from now on, these cards are making autonomous decisions about their clock speed. Absolutely. Which means that you can actually never put two cards head to head. And even if you had two cards in SLI mode, mm -hmm. they could be at different clock speeds because they'll be at different temperatures. Uh, very likely. And that's going to make things a lot more complicated. Is it going to make things more complicated for reviewers as well as consumers? Or just, do you see what I'm getting at? I do. Because I do. in SLI mode, how's it going to work? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it is more complicated. And now for reviewers, it's especially difficult because if you, if you review a card in a good environment, then you're going to get a better score than if you review a card in a poor environment. So from reviewer to reviewer, you're going to see variation. Not only that, users who take home their graphics cards and they put it in a chassis that's not very good or in a room that's not, not uh, cooling correctly, then the GPU will, will not take advantage of the thermal headroom that they may otherwise. So I think this is good for the ecosystem. If you build a good system and you put your card in a good environment, you're going to get better performance. In the past, we had to be super conservative because we had to clock it down to the worst case. Because if you took our graphics card home and you put it in a warm environment, it still had to work. Now we can actually take advantage of that headroom. And that's all done hardware by hardware monitoring. No games profiles or no anything else. Profiles, that's right. no no funny business. It's all Great. a combination and of And each card stuff. that you you don't have to buy, you know, a card from this maker. You you could have they'll all have their own tools Correct. for for making adjustments based on your API. Absolutely. Okay. And um, all right, so March 22nd, the uh, 28 nanometer new GPU from Nvidia will be yeah. out in stores. Absolutely.